Hello, today I would like to go over a really fun virtual experiment that you could utilize when you're working with your students who are alternately assessed and you're working on the Science Essential Element 5 ESS 2-1, which is developing a model to show how water affects living things. So I'm going to show you this really awesome experiment. Um, it's called Rain Cloud in a Jar. and Right here you can see I have my materials. So what I really like about utilizing um, experiments when we're in the virtual classroom is this is something that typically we would do when we are in the actual classroom. And science has so many great hands-on activities and experiments. And just because we are virtual doesn't mean that we still can't utilize those things with our students. Um, so when you're working on talking about the hydrosphere, you're talking about the water cycle, you might be talking about weather. Um, there's a bunch of different activities you can utilize and the one I'm going to show you in particular today is super simple. Only really need three materials and you can go through it with your students. So what I would do initially with my students is I would start to ask them, okay, so you know, maybe let's look out the window, let's talk about what is the weather like today? Right, so maybe if it's raining, that would be a great segue into going through this. Um, if it's not, you can say, okay, well, what are some other types of weather? Um, you know, was it rainy yesterday? Was it cloudy? We had snow. And then you can start talking about how precipitation affects us. And there's different types of precipitation. There's rain, there's snow, there's sleet, there's hail. You can go through the whole gamut. But that can kind of get them, activate their prior knowledge a bit, get them going, and then prep them for what we're going to do now, which is called rain cloud in a jar. So like I said, you can talk all about this. You can also implement this in any part of the water cycle that you're working on, especially, you know, if you want to focus in on one part of the water cycle, you know, you can talk about the precipitation. So like one, the condensation will go up into the clouds, the precipitation will get too heavy, and then it will start to rain. So you can go through that as well and then embed this experiment um, right into that part as you're teaching. So it's really fun, even though we're virtual, your students can still see what's going on, you can model everything for them, and it's really awesome because you can also have them making observations and telling you different things. You can have steps listed, and if you wanna utilize steps written out using BoardMaker to support your students who have AAC devices, you can absolutely do that, and they could tell you what steps to follow. So it can kind of be like, okay, you tell me what is step one. Okay, great. So let's go through what rain cloud in a jar looks like. And I'm going to show you right here. I have three ingredients. I have a glass jar. I chose glass. I, anything see-through is totally fine. Um, it does not have to be glass. It could be plastic. It could be anything that works for you, right? A glass jar is not necessary. But you can have a jar, a see-through jar. You're going to fill it about three-fourths of the way with water. It could be just room temperature water. It could be cool water. Um, you don't need hot water. And then you have shaving cream, and then you're going to have some sort of food coloring. Whatever color dye you want to use, doesn't really matter. I chose blue so that you can see through it, um, so that you'll see what happens when we actually go through the experiment, right? So again, you're going to say, okay, guys, so let's talk about this. What things do you see here, right? And you could talk about what the materials are. You can identify what each of them are. Like, okay, we have a jar here. Does anyone have any idea what might be in that jar? What do you think we filled this jar with? Is it milk? Is it soda? No, it's water, right? How do we know it's water? It has the properties of water. You can then go and identify if water is a liquid, if water is a solid, talk about those different states of matter, right? You can extend the activity even further, but you would go through and identify, look, it's clear, that's one of the properties, it takes the shape of the container it's in, that's another property. So you can go through and talk about all those different things, right? So get that, act, get that observation going, get that vocabulary going with your kids, get that engagement and that back and forth, right? So we have our jar here, we have it filled with water, guys, okay? So this is gonna be like our, our atmosphere, right? This is gonna represent our atmosphere. So now, tell me, what is it that you notice when you look up in the sky? What are those big white puffy things, right? So if you've also talked about clouds already, you can revert back to that and talk about, well, are they cumulus clouds? Are they stratus clouds? <clears throat> Any of those kind of things. So you're gonna have them identify clouds and say, okay, Yes, the clouds, the white puffy things in the sky are clouds, that's right. So you know what we're gonna do? Since we want this to look just like outside, we need to add some clouds, right? We have our atmosphere, but we need to make those clouds. And that's where the shaving cream comes in, right? So you're gonna shake it on up real good. And then add your shaving cream. 
you can have your students tell you when to stop. You can have your students say, oh, okay, put it over here, keep going, right? So you're gonna wanna whoop, get all that in there. And there are our clouds on top of our atmosphere. So you can talk about the differences. What do you notice about the clouds? What color are the clouds? What do they look like? What shapes do you see? So you can talk about all those different things as you're going through the experiment, right? So you talk about the clouds, all the different things, compare it to the water, compare what they see, talk about it, have observations. You can have a board maker board ready to go to support your students who have an AAC device, right? So then next, now we need to get some rain. So we need to make sure that we figure out when that water that gets up in that cloud is super duper heavy, how are we going to see how it comes down? We need to make something super heavy and oversaturate it, right? So that it, it gets so filled up with water that it just starts raining or it starts snowing or sleet or whatever, right? So that is what our food coloring is for. So again, I chose blue um, just so you can see it, but I went, I'll go through and I'll say, okay, so now we need to add that to see what happens when all that water comes, condenses up and goes into that cloud. What's going to happen? So then you would just go in and you would start adding in your food coloring, you can say, okay, what are you noticing now, guys? What do you see? Look, it's all coming down, right? And then you can talk about it. You can ask them, should I put more, right? So you'll see as we go through, when you start adding more of that food coloring, it will actually start to drip down into the water. And you can see how it's coming down. And now our clouds, our clouds are raining, right? So now we've gone through and we've created some rain clouds. And you can turn it around. You could talk about, hmm, what is it that you guys notice? What do you see? You can add some more. You can add some different colors. Get all crazy with however awesome you want it to look because it looks pretty cool. Um, so you can go through and do all that and talk about how water goes through the water cycle. Um, it condensation happens that rises up into the atmosphere then the clouds collect all of the water and it starts to precipitate and that's what we did here we made a huge rain cloud in a jar and you can see all of that you could talk about it what do you notice what you know you can do predictions in the beginning and have the students tell you whether or not their predictions came true so a super fun activity very engaging very visually stimulating because there's so much happening but also not overstimulating because you only have a few things and everything is kind of contained in this one area, right? So I think it's a really awesome activity. It's super fun. My kids love it. Um, they get super excited to see it happen in real time um, and talking about how they made weather, right? So it's really fun. Um, it's a great activity when you're utilizing um, anything within the water cycle. It's a great step of the water cycle and there's a lot of fun activities and experiments. Um, you can have students record and to do some data recording as you're going through it and talking about the steps, right? So a bunch of different options for you, but I wanted to go through a really fun science experiment that you can still do even though we're virtual. So I hope you can use this. I hope this is fun and I hope your kids really enjoy it and you have fun showing your kids how you can make a rain cloud in a jar. So now I'm going to go over a jam board that you can use while you're going through your experiment rain cloud in a jar and your students will be able to show you the data that they're collecting and they'll be able to record any of the information as you go through the experiment. So I'm going to show you how I broke down a worksheet, how I scaffold it, and how I differentiated it for different learners. So starting off with this initial worksheet, it says, what do you think will happen, right? So that's our prediction. What do we think is going to happen in our experiment? And then what they actually saw. And what's nice about this worksheet is that they do not have to write in any words, put any words there, any anything. They can simply just draw what it is that they see. So this is a really great way to have your students participate, to get engaged, and it doesn't require anything that they would have to do that they couldn't already do. So now, although this is a pretty simple starting point, your students might need that to be broken down even further and you can simply do that by breaking it down into first what do you think is going to happen when I have my food coloring my shaving cream and my water and let's see what they say and pretty much anything they say will perfectly be fine then as you're actually going through your experiment you can have them draw what it is that they're seeing. So let's have them draw that shaving cream that's at the top. Let's have them draw that blue that's falling down that's like the rain, right? So now let's move along. 
Now, if your students, if you want to increase your rigor and your students are able to type or write, you can start with a worksheet like this, right? So you can have multiple worksheets embedded within your Jamboard for your various levels. And for this worksheet, they can write out what they think their prediction will be, they can draw what it is that they observe, and then they can write out a small sentence of what it is that they learned, right? So we learned that when the condensation builds up in the clouds, it gets so heavy and then all the precipitation falls, right? But once again, you can absolutely chunk this and break this down if that's what your students need and separate it by creating screenshots of, first, what is our prediction? Let's write, let's type, let's, you know, draw it out. What do we think is going to happen first? Then let's draw what it is that we're seeing. What are we observing? You can also have them add some words in here, add some sentences, type out what it is that they see. And then finally, what did they learn? Okay, so I think this is a really great way to wrap all that up.